Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome back to Adorama TV and another episode of How'd They Do That? Well, today we're talking to Gene Lauer. Now, Gene is a professional photographer and he's taken a lot of celebrity photos of people like Matthew McConaughey, Bruce Springsteen, Bono, Mariah Carey, as well as a lot of photos of sports figures like Andre Agassi, Serena Williams, Kurt Schilling, Randy Johnson, and a bunch of NFL stars. Now, the reason he's been able to do this is that he's the full-time photographer for the Arizona Cardinals. So he travels with the team. He's in the locker room. He's on the field. He was at the Super Bowl. So he is a guy that has a lot of sports experience. And we were recently able to catch up with Gene, and he had a ton of information for us. So here's our conversation with Gene Lauer. Well, we're joined here with Gene Lauer. Thanks for joining us today, Gene. Thanks for having me. All right, so first let's talk about your gear. Tell us a little bit about what uh, camera bodies do you use, first of all. I use the original Mark II body. This is, uh, I have two of these that I carry, and then along with the original uh, 1D. But the Mark II, I find, is the workhorse camera. I know it's about two years old now, but like for what I do, it's a fantastic camera and has been an old, reliable uh, beast for me. So you get two of these guys. That's right. Um, and then most importantly, I think, with shooting a football game is uh, long, fast glass. And so right here we have the 400 millimeter 2.8 which is critical for shooting football, uh, mostly because uh, half your games will be shot either indoors or, outdoor or outdoors at night. Lately, a big uh, lens I've been using is the 15 millimeter fisheye. One nice thing about that on the NFL sidelines is as the action comes to you, it's, it has such a wide range that you can really capture what's happening directly in front of you. At the same time, I'll use a 1735 as well to encompass the same types of photos. 15 millimeter just gives a little bit more uh, width from side to side and just a different angle. Now we talked a little bit earlier before we got in this room and one of the things I noticed is we really didn't talk about the gear very much. Um, we talked a lot about what you call the chess match of shooting sure. uh, football. So tell us a little bit about what you mean by the chess match of, of shooting. Well, shooting football has got an interesting perspective because there's so many different places you can go. For one, you can stay on the field, you can go from an elevated perspective. There's really no place you can't go besides the bench areas. Although for me, I'm allowed in there as well too, so that's a lot of fun for me. And while on the field, the chess match to me is kind of a placement of where you're going to stick yourself that's going to give the most opportune, opportunity for the best photo. My perspective is always coming from the Cardinals' perspective because I'm their team photographer. So a lot of times on defense, I'll stay behind the play so I can get their faces coming at me, vice versa for the offense. Another thing that I find critical is placement of yourself to give opportunities for many different shots. A lot of times if our team is about to score in the end zone, I will place myself in the middle of the end zone. That way, the action's coming directly at me, either corner I can get to, and if for some reason I miss the play here, I still have the option to get coach on the sidelines or the players cheering in there. Right. So is, does that happen quite a bit where you thought, okay, I'm getting shot A and something happens, you can't get it, and then you're available for shot B? I, I would say it happens half the time. You have to be able to have second or third shots in mind before the play happens because between referees, other players, things will happen and get in your way. So if you don't have another idea of what you're looking to get, you're going to walk away from that play with nothing. Right. And so would you say that uh, through experience that you've gotten a little bit better at that? Or is this something that you know? And I would say through experience, I definitely have gotten better from it. I also have learned through the Cardinals that their needs are almost everything that happens yeah. out there. So I try to be in five places at once. So literally for me, as the play is happening, I'll get the shots of the guy scoring a touchdown, mm -hmm. try to get the celebration. And then as the players are running back to the sidelines, I'm usually running next to them on the sidelines, trying to get behind the bench to get the high fives and stuff there. So literally, I'm in three or four locations all within a two minute cycle of a touchdown. Right. So football seems to be something that is, you know, it's very exciting, but it's sort of repetitive. You know, you've got drives, you've got blocks, you've got touchdowns and field goals and things like that. So how do you uh, shoot this and keep things fresh as far as, you know, just making things look different than every single game looks? I think one perspective is using just different equipment at different times. Um, as I mentioned earlier with the fisheye lens, I find that to be a really cool lens to get a different effect with. A popular shot is uh, photos of guys huddling up. A lot of times the linebackers for the Cardinals during the pregame would do a special huddle, in which case I've used numerous different lenses 
and try different, uh, different techniques. I've tried shooting directly at them. I've tried lifting my camera up over them. And then my best luck happened to be sticking underneath them, <laughs> coming up with a fisheye, kind of bending over and coming through. Right. And I actually made myself kind of look like I was in the middle of the huddle myself. So um, earlier when we were talking, you said that you try to shoot the same uh, thing from different perspectives to keep that you know, interesting. So talk, us, talk to us a little bit about that. There's many photos that can be taken from the same exact perspective. When shooting a landscape or in a sporting event, say a wide angle stadium shot, for one, you can just take your normal, say 17 millimeter lens and do the shot just straight on, horizontal, normal hor horizontal line, all of that. You can then flip the camera and get a vertical within it. Also, I'm a big fan of the crooked horizon lines, so I can take a few going this way or that way, and right there alone, I have five or six photos. From the same spot, you can also take a knee, and that'll give you a lower elevated position. Sometimes you can hold the camera above your head, try to get the overhead, and then I also try to incorporate other filters and toys. One filter for sporting events that I'm a big fan of is the um, star filter kind of gives you the effect that you see on TV with the big stadium lights getting the crosshatch. This just brings another dynamic feature to the shots as well. So let's talk a little bit about some of my favorite shots um, that you've taken. One of them is Kurt Warner in the snow. So tell us a little bit how you shot that, what lens you used, what the settings were in the camera. The exposure was probably about 500 to 8. It was pretty dark and with um, all the heavy snow I was really trying just to lighten up the photo as much as I can to really show the whiteness of the snow that was encompassing Kurt. Unfortunately, it wasn't the best day for us overall for the game, but the photos certainly provided some you know, interesting perspectives to Cardinal football. A good photo. That's yes, right. yes. Now, before we go, I want to talk about one uh, specific shot that I think is um, one of your most well-known shots, and that's Pat Tillman that was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Um, tell us a little bit about your interaction with Pat and how that uh, shot came to be made. Well, Pat was always one of my favorite players when he was with the Cardinals. And so having that in, in my head, I always like to take a lot of photos of him, even when he wasn't the most popular guy or sought after player. And the one photo that landed as the Sports Illustrated cover, the most memorable photo of Pat, was always one of my favorite personal shots for my portfolio. Unfortunately, the day that I had found out about Pat, the first thing that came to my head was, I have the photo that really exemplifies who Pat was as a player and as a person. And that photo was then made into a memorial at the stadium itself, and there's a statue. Yes. Um, wow, that's what it's an, an honor. It's an incredible honor for me to actually see one of my photos turn into a statue like that yeah. and to have it represent such a great guy in Pat that it was a very special moment for me. Awesome. Well, thanks. So one more question. Um, are you going to get me some uh, sideline seats? Sure. Maybe you can, <laughs> maybe you can come and grip for me one day. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to do that. Sweet. Okay. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank you. Well, that was a ton of fun talking to Gene today. Remember, if you'd like to see more of Gene's photos and for tips on sports photography or photography tips in general, you can always go to the Adorama Learning Center. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time for today. We'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.